everything that we do uh, is, is, is focused around how do you manage interactions with, with, with humans and wildlife, essentially, um, whether it's preventing humans poaching them, whether it's trying to reduce the conflict between uh, dangerous animals and wildlife. Uh, a lot of people forget that to, uh, to a tourist, a, a lion or an elephant is a beautiful, a beautiful animal, um, and uh, there are very few things that can compare to, to seeing one in the wild. But people in Africa who live with these animals view them in a very different way to what the rest of the world does. We focus very much on how the people living with these animals view them uh, and try to, to bring about some sort of balance associated with their presence. How do you create a, a productive human community and a productive net, uh, wild community uh, in, in the same space, um, relying on the same resources? The conservation world, as, as, as the rest of the world has, has, has suffered, certainly, um, through, through two two means, one of which is uh, reduced ability of, of particularly local nature-based businesses, many of which are tourism related, um, are no longer putting money into conservation or can, can, they cannot afford to. Um, in some cases, that's literally funding the conservation action itself, whether it's paying leases to landowners, etc., etc., or whether it might be funding um, uh, nonprofits like Big Life who, who then do the protection work. We've had a number of donors who've been unable to, to, to continue their donations or reduce them significantly, um, some of whom are corporates um, who've just, their businesses have taken a hit and, and they can no longer support us or at least can't in the meantime. But at the same time, we've had a lot of people who've come through and, and recognized that this is a, an unusual time and, and uh, are, are providing additional support, which we hugely appreciative for, of people realizing that this that the, the real problems that have arisen as a result of COVID um, and, and that we're going about meeting them. The chokehold on the tourism industry has had a huge impact because when the money uh, from tourism cuts off, then people start to look at other ways to make money off that land. And, and the reality is in East Africa, as it is across the rest of the world, we've got growing populations, there's no more land being produced. And so people are trying to, to earn what they, the maximum they can out of a piece of land, which is a rational human decision. What we have seen here, uh, and, and I think a lot of parts of rural Africa, is that a lot of the where the jobs were heavily tied to industries that have been impacted by COVID, there's been a big uh, surge in poaching. We've pulled out 75 snares in the last week, so there's still snares being laid. Uh, that that uh, probably a bit of subsistence poaching coming into that, which is now people that might be acting out of desperation, having lost income um, through through COVID. And Amboseli, there. There's a lot of tourism here, but there's also a lot of local natural resource-based income, whether it's farming or livestock herding, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So a lot of people in a lot of places have been able to fall back on some of those other means, um, and so I think that's buffered the impact slightly. But the the, the risk is certainly still elevated, and we are uh, we, we're doing what we can to to make, sort of keep the uh, keep the threat high enough here that people don't don't try poaching.